And the family of a teen shot by police in Ohio is demanding justice after the city released body camera video of the event. It shows the officer telling 15-year-old Tavion Kuntz Williams to show him his hands before immediately shooting him in the hand. Where you come from? Can I see the hands real quick? Now the teen can be heard repeatedly it's screaming. Fake. Shots it's fired! Shots it's fired! It's fake! It's fake! It's fake! It's fake! It's fake! Shots it's fired! It's drop fake. to the ground! Drop to the ground! It's fake. Drop to the ground! It's fake! Drop to the it's ground! Fake. Drop to the ground! It's fake! It's fake! I promise. Hands be on your back. You can hear the teen repeatedly screaming, it's fake, it's fake, it's fake. A police spokesperson tells ABC News the incident remains under investigation and that they won't be commenting further. Let's bring in ABC's Phil Lipoff along with ABC News legal contributor Shauna Lloyd for more on this. Phil, what's the latest on how this shooting happened? Well, the gun was fake. It was right, the gun was fake, but police got a call around seven o'clock April 1st in the evening that someone was walking around pointing a gun at houses, pretending he was shooting the houses. Gave a description of the person who was doing it. The description matched the description of the 15-year-old. Seven minutes later, this happens. The officer, Ryan Westlake, pulls up. He pulls out. As he's getting out of the car, you can see he sees something in the 15-year-old's hands. He takes a shot, and it hits him in the hand. Thank heaven it didn't, it, it didn't hit him in, the, in the, you know, the torso or in the head or anything like that. But he goes down, and then you can hear him. Basically, he's crying the rest of the video, and he's saying, I play football, I get straight A's, I'm a good kid. He kept repeating all these things. I'm on my way home for my cousin's funeral. My grandmother lives just down the street. He's saying all these things to the officer, who at that point is just concerned with getting him handcuffed. Now, Shauna, an attorney for the teen's family says he was profiled. The Akron Fraternal Order of Police says they're confident that when all the facts of this case come out, that the officer's actions will be deemed justified. How do you see this playing out legally? You know, it's, this is very interesting because he pulled the gun as he got out the car. They have bullhorns for a reason. There are other ways that this could have been handled. So I'm looking for any other video that might be possible. Sometimes other homes can show different angles. If there's any CRT video from a different angle so we can get a full picture. I'm also curious about the background that he came to the car with. What did he know? Have they had any other interactions with this individual? Any other information that provides broader context? Phil, the teen's attorney also says that he was shot on the inside of his wrist and that that indicates that his hands were up at the time. What's the latest on this investigation? It was part of the broader context that Sean is talking about. The attorneys are saying, if you're shot in the inside of your hand, the officer can see the inside of your hand. You see the video, it happened very quickly. As he's getting out of the car, he looks, it, 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 you, you can't, we weren't there, but you can see his hands go up very quickly. Um, and he gets hit in the hand. His attorneys are saying that's because his hands were up, sort of surrendering to the police officer. And his attorneys, his family's attorneys, saying that's why the officer didn't need to shoot. That's going to be at the heart of this investigation. You can believe those split seconds are going to be analyzed over and over and over again. Shauna, records released by the police also show that the officer was fired in 2021 for policy violations, but was later rehired. Uh, his file includes a number of disciplinary actions and use of force incidents, one of which was deemed unreasonable. How could that play into this case now? I mean, what we're looking at is if we have an officer who has a history of excessive force, this puts the blame squarely on the police department. Why was he brought back? Why is he still out there if we know he has this history? So we're going to have to delve into exactly what that other use of force incident was about and whether or not he should have been allowed to come back to the police department at all. Shauna, in terms of the timing here, does it matter that the officer shot as he was getting out of the car? Are there rules in place in terms of rules of engagement for a situation like that, or is it all case by case? Absolutely, Diane. There are standard operating procedures that every police officer has to follow. And get it, shooting as you're getting out of the car, you didn't attempt any bullhorn. There weren't other means that could have been used. So unless there's additional information that comes out that says that that type of response was necessary, then I'm looking at this in a different light. And, and we are looking at live footage right now. The family is speaking there in Akron, Ohio, and that's the teen there, Tavion Kuntz Williams. Uh, the family is now calling for justice uh, in light of this event, and we are going to continue to follow this case very closely. Phil Lipoff, Shauna Lloyd, thank you both.